All right, good Thursday morning, everyone. We are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to talk about the markets. So, Jim, you have some important information for everyone in real money about Europe. Right, I think that uh, Europe's down big today. Uh, I remain convinced that Europe is uh, an excellent place to invest. I think there's some geopolitical concerns started by our, our president in what was actually a blistering speech that, if you look at the history of it, attacks both Germany and Russia ahead of the G20 at the same time when some people would feel like he needs their help for North Korea. Uh, I think the market overall is down today because of geopolitical worries, not because of fundamentals, uh, because the actual numbers that were reported last night, we took at Costco, were, you know, Costco was very good. Yum China was fine, nothing really there. Uh, uh, Herman Miller, which is a small to medium-sized business, was good. I don't regard AVP as being nearly as important as people think because we've got the big number tomorrow. So, I mean, I look at the whole pastiche, I feel like that this market is desperate to find something to trade on, uh, and my real money piece will give you something to trade on. You mentioned Costco. Any more thoughts on those comparable store sales? Well, I think that people, when you report a good number, as Home Depot did, all people do is say it postpones the inevitable, which is Amazon. I continue to believe that there are three bargains in this country. They are Costco with its membership, they are Netflix with its membership, and they are Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Day coming up. Mm. And that all three could have their prices raised, and that's where the gross margins are. So uh, while Costco is a regarded as a retailer, I think it's more of a club, the thing that is hurting Costco is it sells at 25 times earnings, and you would like to see that multiple come down before you take a stab, because that's a very rich multiple for any retailer. All right, shifting gears, there is worry with Volvo entering the electric car space. There is worry with what that means for Tesla. Look, I think that Tesla is uh, cold stock. Uh, I say that because I will opine on pretty much any stock in the world uh, if I have knowledge of it. But I, as I mentioned last night on Mad Money, I'm punting on Tesla because I think that there are a lot of people who think it's a tech company and therefore should trade higher, Gigafactor. And then there's other people, uh, like Anton Wallman, who's one of my great sources, uh, who feel that, look, let's just not forget that even though they're producing cars, they're not producing any growth or any profit. Uh, if there's no growth and no profit in current cars, but you believe in the technology as a future, then I can understand why you might want to buy it. Uh, if you think that it's not a technology stock, I can understand why you want to sell it. Therefore, it's the ultimate battleground. Uh, if I want uh, to buy stocks here in a down market, I have a lot of stocks that offer tremendous comfort that are uh, relative to Tesla, and I'd rather be in those. Okay, NVIDIA remains a top pick for Bank of America, Merrill Lynch? Yeah, I mean, that's a very good piece because it talks about the uh, Nintendo Switch. It talks about the data center advantage. Uh, these are things that it says are not emphasized enough. I continue to believe that NVIDIA, now down 20 points from its high, uh, remains, now that it's down 20 points, a very good entry level, but you may not be able to, may have to be able to leave room and buy some more lower. Not unlike what we did with Broadcom yesterday when we bought it for action alerts. All right, and GE's price target was cut by J.P. Morgan. The J.P. Morgan analyst has been a huge bear, uh, and he's been right. So I always uh, am concerned. Uh, the Travel Trust owns it. Stock did jump to 29 when a new CEO came in. Uh, a lot of people say, well, Jim, you said it's one of the best stocks for the next 10 years, and, you know, you're wrong. I, at last I look, uh, 10 years are not up. Uh, I would point out that Flannery is, uh, will be able to, take, to do the dramatic cost cuts that I think that ML couldn't. Uh, I think the sum of the parts is $20 by J.P. Morgan was a little bit too negative. Uh, I recognize that it's not a great stock. I recognize that it's been a terrible stock. Uh, I also think that there's opportunities here with the new CEO. Mark Jim, what did you make of QVC buying HSN? They're picking a great time. HSN, if you take a look, it's historically much lower than it should be versus its numbers. There's a company that sold at a low price earnings ratio with a 38% stake by QVC. This is, once again, brilliance by Liberty Media. Um, I wish that uh, uh, everyone had the foresight of a Malone and a Maffei. All right, and then Jim, on Stop Trading on Swalk in the Street, you talked about Twitter. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have this Twitter direct initiative that I was part of a test and it allowed you to be able to find out a little more about the people who hassled you because there is tremendous hassle and they're discontinuing on July 7th. Why is this important? Okay, Ed Sheeran has pulled out of Twitter because of the attacks, the trolls. 
uh, Roy McIlroy because he attacks the trolls. And I'm concerned that uh, Twitter's going up here. I'm concerned that Twitter may make its numbers by continuing to have blind, anonymous attacks, which generate a lot of, of interest. And I think that the reason why I like Facebook and Instagram so much is it's a much more benevolent uh, environment. Snap is too. Uh, does Twitter need to make its numbers uh, by continuing with anonymous uh, attacks? Or is Twitter actually uh, something going on? I have said that Jack Dorsey uh, has done his work at Square. Uh, Sarah Fryer doing a remarkable job as CFO at Square. I have liked Square since 12 after being very concerned that it had credit issues. It really doesn't. We use Square at Bar San Miguel, which is how I became familiar with it and one of the reasons why I liked it so much other than listening to Sarah Fryer on CNBC. Um, but Jack Dorsey is now free if he wants to to go full-time at Twitter and I don't know why he doesn't. Uh, I do feel that if you got rid of the anonymous attacks on Twitter, its value would go up, not down, even if the number of users went down. Why do I say that? Because then it would be a more accurate data mining play. That has always been the attraction of Twitter, particularly for a sales force, which wanted it to be a data mining. I don't expect Salesforce to go back there anytime soon. There was a rebellion among its shareholders when Mark Benioff tried to put a deal together. All right, Jim, you mentioned a little bit earlier, but what are you expecting from Friday's jobs report? Okay, I think the jobs report is going to be fine and confirm once again that the Fed can be on course to raise rates. Uh, the bank stocks are strong in an otherwise very negative market. We'll put out something. Uh, uh, we're assessing uh, what to say about the jobs report, but I want to make this point about the jobs report. Uh, we're not seeing wage growth. And because we're not seeing wage growth, we're not seeing a lot of inflation. And that some of the people in the Fed are now saying, whoa, we don't need to raise because so there's not a lot of inflation. I think that that's mindless chatter. And what the Fed has in its cars is the September rate hike. And that's why the banks are moving up. And it makes a lot of sense because why not try to normalize your uh, and why not normalize your policy at a time when unemployment is at an at incredible low, even if wage growth is not good? Now, why is this important? Because I think there are a lot of people out there who say, well, listen, if wage growth is not good, why would the Fed ever tighten? The answer is, is that the Fed just wants to get back to where it used to be uh, so that it can have a normalized policy. I totally get that. Referring back to my European piece I, this morning, I think that the best place to invest is Europe because they, too, have to get back into a more normal environment, which would be fabulous and confirming what I think, which is that Europe is getting reliquified and ready for business. And these are observations from your experiences there. Well, uh, not just, uh, it's, that was an anecdotal thing that made me look at the, uh, all the different uh, raises yes. of capital that make me feel that the anecdotal is being supplanted by the empirical. Oh, it's great to have that perspective. Jim Kramer, thank you so much as always. And for more information on the stocks you mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.